On March 28th, Chinese technology company Xiaomi announced the launch of their first electric vehicle, the SU7. The standard retail price is less than 220,000 yuan, equivalent to roughly 31,000 US dollars, undercutting market expectations and signaling an intent to compete with Tesla. However, many people have observed resemblances between the SU7 and the Porsche Taycan, not just in appearance, but also in the design of the car key and the key battery replacement. Some internet users jokingly suggested renaming the SU7 as Bao Xiaomi, which means Porsche Mi, a combined name for Porsche and Xiaomi. On April 2nd, a TikTok influencer known as Sister Yun with an IP address based in Fujian province uploaded a video and commented, The Porsche Mi looks so appealing. We immediately placed an order for a test drive. Shortly after driving the new car out of the gate, we heard a cracking sound. Initially, we thought it was from the car next to ours, but upon closer inspection, we realized it was ours. We wondered if it was a tire blowout. The test drive driver quickly clarified he did not drive aggressively. When we got out of the car and investigated, we discovered there were leaks near all four tires. Does anyone know what's going on? Upon close examination, leaks were found in six places. Less than a week after the launch of Xiaomi SU7, the seats are showing signs of cracking, peeling, and deformation. Look at this picture. The seat, originally a pristine white, is now oxidized. The white has turned to black, like a car seat after a decade of use. Furthermore, in this image, the seat material has started to bulge, indicating loss of elasticity. And from this picture, it's evident that the upholstery of Xiaomi's car seats is already peeling. These issues arising within just a few days undoubtedly raise significant concerns among consumers regarding the durability of this product. Xiaomi SU7 has introduced three variants, Standard, Pro, and Max, priced at 215,900 yuan, 245,900 yuan, and 299,900 yuan, respectively. That's equivalent to roughly 29,850, 34,000, and 41,460 US dollars, respectively. Delivery will commence for the standard and max variants by the end of April, while the pro variant will be delivered by the end of May. The first challenge faced by the Xiaomi car upon its launch was regarding its actual sales figures. During delivery of the ceremony of SU7 on April 3rd, Xiaomi's founder, Lei Jun, announced the vehicle had attracted 100,000 reservations with 40,000 orders locked in. This happened within less than a week of its launch. However, a peak in both reservations and cancellations occurred simultaneously. The cancellation rate of Xiaomi SU7 soared to a surprising 40%. Behind this, Xiaomi may be facing a crisis far greater than anticipated. On March 29th, the day following the Xiaomi SU7 launch event, complaints about cancellations of Xiaomi cars surged on social media platforms. As per official guidelines, Xiaomi car purchases involving substantial deposits such as those for the max version requiring a 20,000 yuan deposit are immediately secured and ineligible for refunds. Conversely, deposits of 5,000 yuan for the standard and pro versions are initially open for refund within a seven day window without reason. Beyond this period, they automatically become non-refundable and secured. However, on March 29th, many complaints demanding deposit refunds appeared on consumer rights protection platforms. The official Chinese website of the Black Cat Complaints shows that numerous consumers filed complaints on the platform. They stated that the 5,000 yuan car deposit cannot be refunded, different from Xiaomi's claim of a 7-day unconditional refund policy. On that day alone, complaints regarding Xiaomi car deposits reached 1,242. I handed over the full payment of 300,000 yuan to Xiaomi Delivery Center four days ago, yet there is still no clear pickup time. Let me describe the overall process. Firstly, after the launch event on March 28th at 10 a.m., I opted for a major deposit of 20,000 yuan, meaning once paid, cancellation wasn't an option. I was committed to buying the car. Because I was eager to make the purchase, I chose a dual purple color scheme. A 
and pay the deposit at exactly 10.06 on the same day. I assume Xiaomi followed the sequence of deposit payments for scheduling pickups. Two days later, a salesperson created a group and contacted me to arrange final payment. When I inquired if I could pay upon pickup, their salesperson emphasized that the speed of final payment determined my pickup time. Without signing a contract, I promptly transferred the remaining 279,000 yuan to the salesperson. Since then, I've been waiting with no updates. I informed the salesperson that the full 300,000 yuan had been paid and asked if I could still get a car from the first batch. However, they responded that since the invoice had hadn't been issued, they couldn't arrange a pickup for me. I eventually gave up on getting a first batch car. Now my only request is for the salesperson to provide a definite pickup time. However, they insist they can't provide one. I would like to ask those familiar with consumer protection laws. Is it considered a violation of consumer rights when a car company receives 300,000 yuan in cash, delays issuing an invoice for four days, and can't provide a clear pickup time? According to Chinese media reports, the lock-in rate for Xiaomi SU7 is currently only between 35% and 40%, which includes many instances of accidental lock-ins by consumers. As Xiaomi does not allow cancellations, Numerous sellers on a Chinese consumer-to-consumer -consumer marketplace platform called Idle Fish are now selling Xiaomi SU7 orders for prices ranging from 1,000 to 2,000 yuan. While Xiaomi manages to attract a diverse range of consumer groups, it appears unprepared to handle a large influx of orders. Based on orders shared by internet users, it takes up to eight months for delivery of the Xiaomi SU7 Max version. Chinese media reports indicate that the head of Xiaomi's car factory revealed that the factory is currently expected to produce around 240 cars per day and has not yet requested overtime production. Xiaomi originally aimed to produce around 7,000 cars per month, but has now increased its target to approximately 12,000 cars per month. However, Xiaomi suppliers admit that despite being able to supply all the necessary components, Xiaomi's own production capacity is still struggling to meet the target of 12,000 cars per month. It has been said that Xiaomi's car production certification in factories do not belong to Xiaomi. The certification for car production has been one of the most concerning topics for both external and internal observers since Xiaomi announced its venture into car manufacturing. After all, due to certification issues, many cross-border car manufacturing companies have been forced to adjust their directions or even shut down. An example of this is the Neutron Car Company, while Jidu Auto and Jishir Cars also face similar issues. But does the mass production of Xiaomi cars indicate a bright future for Xiaomi? The truth may be quite the opposite. Lei Jun admitted after the launch event that Xiaomi loses money on every car sold. He priced the SU7 at 30,000 yuan, cheaper than the Tesla Model 3. The goal was to convey sincerity to consumers, but the incurred losses also need to be manageable. A senior research analyst and banking company BOC International China in Shanghai, Lu Jia, commented on Xiaomi's marketing strategy. She told Voice of America that Xiaomi's production capacity could potentially increase to 100,000 vehicles this year. In the long term, it may challenge Tesla's leading position in China's B-class sedan market. However, she also noted that Xiaomi's strategy of selling at a loss to grab market share is unsustainable and will exacerbate the internal competition and abnormal development of China's electric vehicle industry. Some analysts predict that the losses incurred by Xiaomi cars could be enormous. City research analysts caution that ultimately everyone within the 200 to 300,000 yuan segment could be a loser. According to City Research's estimates, based on this year's projected sales of 60,000 units, Xiaomi's SU7 may incur a net loss of 4.1 billion yuan. That's an average loss of 68,000 yuan per vehicle. Frequent quality issues with Xiaomi cars have sparked widespread consumer concerns. 1. Brake failure incidents. Several incidents of brake failure in Xiaomi cars have been exposed, resulting in serious traffic accidents and even endangering lives. 2. Battery fire incidents. Users have reported Xiaomi car batteries catching fire during charging or driving, causing severe damage to vehicles and posing safety risks. 3. Suspension breakage incidents. 
Many Xiaomi car users have found incidents of suspension breakage, affecting driving stability and safety. For car infotainment system malfunctions, Xiaomi car's infotainment systems have repeatedly experienced issues such as freezing, crashing, and black screens, negatively affecting user experience. 5. Rough Assembly Craftsmanship Some consumers have reported rough assembly craftsmanship in Xiaomi cars, resulting in noisiness, excessive gaps, and loose components. In addition, Xiaomi's decision to replace traditional copper wiring with aluminum wiring during the initial delivery of its first batch of mass-produced cars has sparked widespread online discussion. Immediately, accusations emerged stating that Xiaomi cars using aluminum wires is a typical shortcut. Many internet users expressed their doubts. As an emerging brand in the automotive industry, the rationale behind Xiaomi's adjustments has become a topic with diverse opinions. As one of the vital components of a vehicle, the overall quality and performance of wiring are crucial for the safe operation of cars. Traditionally, copper wiring has been widely utilized due to its excellent conductivity. In contrast, aluminum wiring has certain disadvantages in this regard, undoubtedly posing certain safety risks to vehicles. Xiaomi responded by stating that the majority of charging wire harnesses used by most OEMs currently employ aluminum conductors, including those in Xiaomi SU7. Aluminum conductors offer the same performance and safety characteristics as copper conductors. The only difference is their conductivities. Conductivities can be compensated for by adjusting the cross-sectional area to achieve the same current carrying capacity. Aluminum conductors also possess advantages that copper conductors lack, such as lightweight properties, with aluminum wires being 30% lighter than copper wires. Therefore, for electric vehicles, due to the additional emphasis on range and fast charging, switching from copper to aluminum has become the mainstream trend in the industry. Nevertheless, netizens remain skeptical. Some internet users argue that using aluminum wiring is a shortcut. Aluminum wires have higher resistance than copper wires, making them more prone to overheating. Therefore, aluminum wiring is not allowed in construction projects or home renovations, as it's considered a basic safety requirement. If Xiaomi aims to reduce weight, they could opt for silver wiring, which is lighter and has even lower resistance. Using aluminum wiring is cutting corners and poses significant safety risks. Others criticize that while smartphones may be bought for leisure, given their affordability, but when it comes to a vehicle worth hundreds of thousands of yuan, Xiaomi is being deceitful. After all, they lack experience in the automotive industry, and any shortcuts taken could lead to fatal issues. Internet users point out that if aluminum wiring is used, it compromises the safety of the car. Aluminum wiring generates more heat and is more prone to breakage and oxidation. As a car is used for long periods of time, these aluminum wires are more likely to encounter safety issues. Do the car manufacturers at Xiaomi truly lack common sense? Is cutting corners considered legitimate? Previously listed on the Forbes China Celebrity 100 ranking, the director of China Lean Management Research Institute, Wang Zhongchu, warned about the poor quality of cars produced in China. If judged by the standards of Japanese Toyota cars, cars produced in China have so many flaws that they may not sell a single one. Therefore, he drives foreign cars and never drives Chinese cars. As for why this is the case, Wang found that Chinese car companies were all state-owned enterprises of the Chinese Communist Party in the past. In order to ensure that substandard domestic cars are purchased, the CCP would impose very high import tariffs on foreign cars, therefore making foreign cars much more expensive than Chinese cars. In such a competitive environment, the quality of domestic cars must be very poor because even if there are no improvements made, people will still buy them. Xiaomi's car design has been criticized for plagiarism. An independent media released a video comparing the Xiaomi SU7 with a Porsche Taycan 4S, showing a high degree of similarity between the two models. Founder of technology company Faraday Future, based in the United States, Jia Yue Ting, accused the Xiaomi SU7 design of being too low level. On April 1st, Zhao criticized Xiaomi on Chinese social media platform Weibo for its imitation culture and shortcut methods. If many people still support such behavior, it is worrying, he said. He also mentioned that copying and superficial innovation 
cannot bring about fundamental technological changes. In response to the strong impact of Xiaomi's car launch, starting from early April, many Chinese electric automobile brands such as Zeker, Aito, Nio, Geely, Wuling, Cherry, Jiyue, and FAW Volkswagen launched profit-making activities for the products. This marked the beginning of a new price war in the market. Among them, the Aito M7 reduced its price by 20,000 yuan. The 2024 model of the Xpeng G9 enjoys a smart driving subsidy upon purchase with a limited time reduction of up to 20,000 yuan for existing cars. The Zeker 007 has launched a rear-wheel drive enhanced version with an official retail price of 209,900 yuan, which is equivalent to a disguised price reduction of 20,000 yuan. Wuling Motors announced that the Wuling Bingo has launched a promotion with discounts of up to 10,000 yuan. NIO announced that gasoline car users who replace their cars with the new 2024 NIO cars will enjoy the National Gasoline Car Replacement Subsidy. Not only that, but they will also receive an additional 10,000 yuan subsidy for optional equipment funds. In addition to this, Geely, Cherry, FAW Volkswagen, and other car companies have also introduced different promotional policies. Even Tesla, which has just adjusted the prices of the Model 3 and Y, had to make compromises. On April 3rd, Tesla China announced a limited-time low-interest replacement policy for the Model 3 and Y and introduced an interest-free installment purchase subsidy for the first time. BYD has also significantly reduced the prices of some models since the beginning of this year. Prices have been reduced by more than 10% for models that account for more than 75% of its total sales. That is simply 10% off pretty much everything. Since 2023, the Chinese new energy vehicle market has been in disorder, with major car companies launching one price war after another. It's worth noting that BYD initiated price reductions earlier this year, marking the beginning of the 2024 new energy price reduction trend and advocating the slogan, electricity is cheaper than oil. Subsequently, major car companies followed suit. Less than two months later, a new round of price wars started again. This implies that the competition among new energy vehicle companies will intensify in 2024, with the elimination phase reaching a peak of intense rivalry. Xiaomi's entry into the market has pushed the competition in the new energy market to a new level. Several industry experts believe that the simultaneous price reductions by numerous car manufacturers stem from the intense competitive pressure triggered by the Xiaomi SU7's successful debut. This compelled these companies to proactively respond with price cuts to regain market traction. On the other hand, as the second quarter gradually enters the sales off-season, facing the downturn in the overall environment, car companies can only sacrifice profits to ensure sales volumes and market share. Recently, the topic of the second-hand car market does not trust new energy has also become a hot topic. According to car dealers in the second-hand car market, they dare not accept new energy vehicles. According to them, the price of a new energy vehicle was over 140,000 yuan last year, and it dropped by 70,000 yuan this year. The dealers are losing money on this car. In addition, at present, you could buy a new energy vehicle for 70,000 to 80,000 yuan, so many customers choose to buy new cars directly without considering used cars. The Xiaomi SU7 has become a new internet celebrity, while the previous internet celebrity was the ideal mega. In this turbulent new energy market, how long can the popularity of the Xiaomi SU7 last? Ideal Motors' first pure electric vehicle, the Ideal Mega, has been in controversy since its launch. Before the launch, Ideal stated that the goal of the Mega was to become the number one in sales among all passenger cars priced above 500,000 yuan. Yet in just 72 hours post-launch, the Mega encountered over 10,000 cancellations of minor orders. As the release approaches two-week mark, only about 4,000 vehicles have been ordered. These occurrences underscore that the Mega's performance falls short of internal projections. It is generally believed in the industry that 2024 will mark the beginning of the elimination round for smart electric vehicles. Each decision holds immense significance and each manufacturer still faces the challenge of survival. Therefore, the main problems with the ideal Mega lie in misjudgments in product positioning, sale goals, and market feedback. As the saying goes, the higher you are praised, the harder you fall. Thank you.